My primary concern when transitioning from pediatric to adult healthcare was leaving an incredible team of doctors that I had been with my entire life and going to a new place with doctors that I didn't know and um, how the relationship would grow between me and my new doctors. So the most difficult aspect of transition from pediatrics to adults, uh, I would say that moving to completely new providers and uh, not knowing how it's going to be seeing them in clinic visits um, and taking on more responsibility for self-care. I think the um, transition to adult care didn't come as um, a big challenge. What I wanted and what her dad wanted was to make sure that she felt as confident in her ability to um, be successful in taking care of herself. And I think the pediatric care environment built that confidence and it was important to us that the adult care maintained that. For parents, it's pretty challenging. Um, again, it's letting go of, you know, I've raised this child and taken good, good care of them for 18 years and now I have to let it go and they need to take care of it. Well, our center helps people through the transition by starting very early. So transitions discussed over on the pediatric team from as early as the school age years. Uh, so the pediatric team will you know, periodically just mention, you know, over time your child's going to do more you know, gradually themselves. Um, and so that seed's planted very young. We assist our patients and families with the transition process by having them participate in a transition program. We developed this program a few years ago. It's called the Journey to Independence. And we actually have different homework assignments and hands-on activities that our patients do while they're in clinic to help um, work towards self-care and independence. And they also have solo visits when they're in their teenage years where we ask the patient to come back to the exam room without their parents so that we can talk to them alone and really try to understand where they are in their disease understanding and coping without help from mom or dad. And then after they are uh, ready for the transition to the adult center, we actually have Shana and her team come to our pediatric center for a formal adult transition clinic. And that allows our patients and families on the pediatric side to meet all of their new care team members in a familiar environment and get to know them a little bit before that actual transition over to the adult program. So one of the ways that we work towards uh, effective transition is by that close collaboration with the pediatric care team. And I think that last transition visit together is so important because it demonstrates that this care team that patients and families have so much trust in and trust us um, as the adult care team with their continued care. Um, and that observation it goes a long way for building those new relationships. Um, and then, so once a young adult comes to our center for the first time, they already recognize our faces, um, they understand our roles, and they assume that we're trustworthy with their continued care. Um, and then communication, um, education, and relationship building moving forward are, are very important things that we work towards um, after that beginning phase. My pediatric team helped me prepare for my transition to adult care through the transition program, which um, they assigned homework assignments where I would focus on different aspects of health care on different visits, um, including nutrition and the respiratory aspect, which if you don't combine all of them, then your health falls apart. Um, it was also helpful with the individual visits where I would go without a parent and have talks with the doctors, which would encourage me to be more involved rather than having my mom or dad answer the questions for me. I would have to think about what was being done and determine any questions that I had. We also offer 
depending on the individual, a transition planning meeting with the adult team, alternating visits between the pediatric team and the adult team from age 17 to 18. The first change that I, I had during this transition was moving from pediatric care to the adult care, which was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, just because I got to meet the doctors before I moved. So it was, they weren't completely new faces at, at Emory. They were, they were people I'd already met, and it made it a little easier. One of the number one suggestions I have for children and families to manage transition is to ask a lot of questions and, and really anticipate it. Putting it off, trying to not think about it, trying to um, uh, stay in that pediatric bubble <laughs> during from age 17 to 18 really doesn't help. I mean, the more of a plan people can make, the better. Um, even if it's that they decide they want to stay with the pe pediatric team and not do alternating visits, but that they're looking forward um, and practicing little by little over the years in doing more self-management. I mean, I think parents that uh, think of it as a time of graduation and, and that they're getting them ready, just as you would graduating from high school. I think that those folks feel a little less nervous about it and have already practiced, so they're already in that mode when they turn 18 and make the final transfer. And I think for us as her parents, um, it created an opportunity to have a dialogue. And um, we realized that there were aspects of the, the overall care that we probably hadn't talked about before. And so it gave us a great opportunity to talk about it. Um, I think I've said before that she's always been very independent and, and takes care of herself and really from a very young age managed most of this herself. But there were aspects of it that she just didn't know um, enough about and this gave us an opportunity to talk about it. Talking with your pediatric team about your worries and concerns about that transition phase. So, um, that you do feel geared up and prepared uh, for the change. Also, I think it's important um, for people to realize that adult care team members are invested in CF care. So even though they're new to us, we care about their health, most importantly, their well-being and their transition experience. And then I think most importantly um, is being empowered to ask questions um, so that when you do come to an adult care center and you don't understand how something works, ask. And especially if you have questions or concerns early on in your transition experience, I would encourage people to be brave and reach out to a care team member and, and talk that out. Um, a social worker can often be a, a person to confide in and sort of get a resolution to your concerns. Um, but really, you know, talking to the person you feel most comfortable with uh, can be really helpful in developing that long-term relationship and, you know, working through issues as they come along. I thought one of the smartest things that they did uh, for between Scottish Wright and, and Emory was to transition him at 17 when he was still in high school and still here so that he get to know the team in a familiar surrounding. Um, it, it helped me also to start backing off and not harping on him doing his treatments so much. And also, uh, when going to the um, clinics, having to sit back and not say anything and letting him steer, him have control, and learning to do that so that he'd be able to do it once he went away from home. To learn more about this issue, ask your CF Foundation accredited care center or contact the CF Foundation directly. Call 800-FIGHT-CF or email us at info at cff.org.